Question number 21. Uh, in this figure, we have A, B, and C are given as collinear, which means they lie along the straight line. And we have angle D, B, A equal to angle E, B, A. This is given. This is given. These two angles are equal. Now, name two linear pairs. What all are linear pairs? Now, if we can identify two linear pairs. Linear pairs are, it's a pair obviously, comprising two adjacent angles which are supplementary. Two adjacent angles which are supplementary. So you can see that this and this, if I call this angle 1 and this as angle 2, then angle 1 and angle 2 and angle 2, angle 1 and angle 2 form one linear pair. I'm going to highlight the other one, the other pair. Let me call these angles angle 3 and angle 4. So angle 3 and angle 4 is another pair. Angle 3 and angle 4 is another linear pair. So let me name these angles by the name that comes from uh, the given figure. So in this case, angle 1 is angle ABD. So angle A, B, D and angle 2 as you can see is angle D, B, C. This is one linear pair. Angle 3 is angle A, B, E or angle E, B, A. And E, B, C. These are two linear pairs. Now the second part of the question asks us to identify Name two pairs of supplementary angles. Two pairs of supplementary angles. Now supplementary angles are angles, two angles which add to 180 degrees. The pair add to 180 degrees. So once again, we see that angle 1 and angle 2 is one pair of supplementary angles again angle 1 and angle 2 they form supplementary angles so it's same answer angle ABD this is angle ABD and angle DBC 3 and 4 form another pair of supplementary angles angle EBA and angle EBC so both have the same answer Obviously, if they are linear pairs, they are supplementary as well. So, we can have these same pairs as the supplementary angle pair as well. Now, coming to question number 22. We have some information given. It's given that line L, oh, sorry, AB is parallel to CD and that we have marked. And we have PQ given as a transversal which cut these two parallel lines at L and L. M. This angle is 35 degrees. So we are now I asked to find out what angle ALM to find angle ALM. Let's see how much that comes to angle ALM. We are talking about this angle. Let's say this is angle one. So here let angle ALM be equal to angle one. We are just naming it one so as so that we can identify it easily no other reason. This is equal to angle LMD, LMD, because they form alternate interior angle pair, alternate interior angles. And therefore, angle 1 is equal to 35 degree. Now, these two angles are equal and therefore, if this is 35, this is also 35. Now, the next thing to find is angle PLA. Angle PLA, let's call it angle 2. We are also required to find angle PLA, which we have named as angle 2. So now angle 1 and angle 2, you would agree, form a linear pair. Here, angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degree. They are on a straight line. They are adjacent angles and the supplementary. That's the reason why angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair. Write the reason. They form a linear pair. 
we have already found the value of 1 which is 35 this is 35 plus angle 2 makes it 180 and therefore angle 2 which is equal to 180 minus 35 degree will come to 145 degree that's the answer so angle 2 is 145 degree that's question number 22 for you coming to question number 23 uh, easy question and the median of the altitude we know that median is what a line drawn from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side as you can see here e is the midpoint of BC and therefore a e is the median a is the median we are asked to identify the median that's one and the altitude now we see that AD is perpendicular to the opposite side so a line drawn from a vertex and perpendicular to the opposite side is the altitude AD is perpendicular to BC and therefore AD is the altitude so a e is the median and A D is the altitude. Now coming to question number 24. It's given that this is an isosceles triangle. So given, let in this case write the steps as this. Let A B C be an isosceles triangle where angle B is 50 degrees. It's given that one side, one angle is given. Here we take, before we write this, write this way, an isosceles triangle, we know that two sides are equal. So let's write, so let us take these two sides to be equal. So AB is equal to AC because it's an isosceles triangle, two sides are equal. Now, interestingly, you'll have to have the right angle marked here. When one of the angles is given as 50 degree, take this as 50 degree. So if this is 50, let angle B be equal to 50 degree now because this angle is equal to angle B because angle C is equal to angle B therefore angle C also becomes 50 degree now by ASP by ASP angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degree and that gets us what angle A plus 50 degree plus 50 degree is equal to 180 degree and therefore angle A if you transpose 50 plus 50 100 to the other side it becomes 180 minus 100 and that is equal to 80 degree so angle A summarizing A, angle A is equal to 80 degree angle B is equal to 50 degree angle C is equal to 50 degree these are the measures of the three sides three angles of the triangle Question number 25. A plane flies 320 km due west. So if you take a point, any point, and if we are traveling west, it would be this direction. It would be this direction. So this is the direction which the plane flies. So this flies 300. So let's let A be the original position and B be this position where the westward journey has ended. So this is 320 km okay and then 240 kilometer due north so from this point it flew 320 kilometer west and then it takes a north so you all know that north is this direction and let's call this point C and it's given that this is 240 kilometer find the shortest distance covered by the plane to reach its original position so let a be the original position here a b is equal to 320 kilometer and b c is equal to 240 kilometer so we are required to find the shortest to find the shortest to find the shortest distance covered by the plane the shortest distance to find the shortest 
So we are required to find the shortest distance covered by the plane to reach its original position. The shortest distance to reach the original position to reach the original position would be CA. As you can see, if you go from here to here and then from here to here, the shortest distance to reach the original position would be CA. This from west to north, you know that the distances are all perpendicular, the directions rather. This is east, this is west, this is north and this is south and each one is perpendicular to each other over here. So, you would see that this is when one goes from west to north and then north, this would be 90 degrees. So, we will apply Pythagoras theorem in triangle ABC, in triangle ABC by Pythagoras theorem, we know what AC square, the square of the hypotenuse, which one is the hypotenuse? The side opposite to the right angle or 90 degrees. So, AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. So, AB we know is 320 square plus BC is 240 square. Let's see what their squares are. Let's try this in the work column. So, 32 into 32. One zero two four. So this comes to one zero two four, and then two zeros plus twenty four into twenty four is five seven six zero zero. You can add this to see how much this comes to five seventy six zero zero. So this is zero 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 six one. So we get AC square is equal to one six zero. 0, 0, 0. Therefore, AC, this is the square of AC. Now, if you try, if you find out what number when squared, when multiplied by itself comes to 1, 6, 0, 0, you'll find that for 16, it's 4, 0, 0. So, 400 would be the answer. This would come to, you can verify, 400 into 400 would come to 16 followed by four zeros. So, this distance comes to 400. That's our answer. So, the shortest distance covered by the plane to reach its original position is 400 kilometers. Coming to question 26. Express each of the following numbers as product of powers of their prime factors. So, we have got to factorize and express this as powers of prime factors. So, 2800, let us factorize this. So, it is 2 into 1400, zero, zero, then 2 into 700, 2350. You can divide this number by 2 to actually find this if you are not very uh, rehearsed doing it this way. 175. So, this is not divisible by 2. This is not divisible by 3. Let us try with 5. So, this is the exhaustive factorization. This is the max that we can do. This comes to, therefore, 2800 can be written as 2 to the power 4 because we have 2 appearing 4 times into 5 square into 7. That is it. That is the, that's the power of prime, prime factors in which this number can be expressed. Now, let us try 675. This is, yes, it is divisible by 3 because the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. So, this number is divisible by 3. 3 twos are 6, 225. This is again divisible by 3. This goes on 325. Now, it is not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 5. And this is all. So, 675 can be written as 3 to the power 3 into 2 to the power 2. That is the answer. Now, coming to question number 7, express in exponential form. So, here we will apply all the laws of exponents that we are familiar with and see how much we get. So, in this case, let us first resolve things under the bracket. So, this comes to 2 to the power 
8 sorry 3 to the power 3 into 4 12 so in this case and let us write the reason as to what we are doing here a to the power m raised to n is equal to a to the power m into n that's the that's the law we have applied here into 2 to the power 8 and this is divided by 2 to the power 12 okay so now this can be written as 12 plus 8 and write the law here because a to the power m into a to the power n is equal to a to the power m plus n that's the law that we have applied here this divided by 2 to the power 12 so this becomes 2 to the power 20 divided by 2 to the power 12 and this is equal to 2 to the power 20 minus 12 and the law that we are applying here is a to the power m divided by a to the power n is equal to a to the power m minus n this is the one that we are applying here and eventually we get the answer as 2 to the power 8 we are supposed to leave this this way because the question asks us to simplify and express in exponential form so in exponential form this is the answer same thing over here here we can see that there are two components numerator and denominator so you can see that 5 to the power 4 and 5 to the power 4 will readily cancel each other out now let's see what all we are left with in this case we are left with x to the power 10 by x to the power 7 into y to the power 5 by y to the power 4 now this comes to x to the power 10 minus 7 into y to the power 5 minus 4 reason a to the power m by a to the power n is equal to a to the power m minus n and that gets us the answer this is x to the power 3 into y this is the answer question number 28 we are required to find the value of n in each of the following so in this case let us express everything in terms of prime factors so that gets us 7 to the power 2 n plus 1 divided by 7 square 49 can be written as 7 square and that's equal to 7 to the power 3 now that gets us 7 to the power 2 n plus 1 minus 2 is equal to 7 to the power 3 and the rule that we are applying here is a to the power m divided by a to the power n is equal to a to the power m minus n so in this case these two factors are powers of 7 are dividing so we have got a to the power m divided by a to the power n and that's the reason why we have a to the power m minus n so that gets us what 7 2n plus 1 minus 2 is equal to 7 to the power 3 so you will see that when the bases are the same the exponents will be equal so in this case 2n minus 1 is equal to 3 that means 2n is equal to 4 and therefore n is equal to 2 in this case n is equal to 2 let's see what will be the value of n here so in this case this is let us resolve this things there are a lot of things under bracket so let's first resolve this this will come to 3 by 2 to the power 10 is equal to 2 by 3 to the power 2 n minus 2 now here we have got to follow some trick folks look here when we have 2 by 3 or let me just take a generic case when we have x by y to the power 1 this can be written as y by x to the power minus 1 no confused still let me let me explain this so if we have 2 by 3 then can I not write this as 3 to the power minus 1 by 2 to the power minus 1 so has it not become 3 to the power minus 1 so if I make the numerator the denominator and the denominator the numerator the power changes sign so in this case what will happen if I am to have the same power on both sides 
I would have this as 2 by 3 to the power minus 10 because I've made the numerator the denominator and denominator the numerator this will have a minus 10 the sign of this power will change and that becomes equal to 2 by 3 to the power 2 and minus 2 why have I done that so that I have common basis it's only then that we can equate the power so that gets us what minus 10 is equal to 2 n minus 2 so if I bring 2 on this side we have minus 10 plus 2 is equal to 2 n that gets us what 2 n is equal to minus 8 and therefore n is equal to minus 4 that's the answer Question number 29. So in this case, the measure of angle 1 is given. This is equal to 70 degrees given. And it's also given that OE is the bisector of angle BOD. OE is the bisector of angle BOD. Does that not mean that this is also equal to 70 degree? Now if BOD BOD is being bisected by OE, angle BOD is being bisected by OE, then this will be equal to this. So with all of this information, let us find, let us see if we can find the remaining values, remaining angles. So in this case, we see, let us find things one by one. We see angle, wo angle 1, which is 70 degree, angle DOE, plus angle EOB this plus this plus angle 4 is equal to 180 degree because DC is a straight line because DC is a straight line so the angle formed on a straight line is 180 degree and that's the reason why this is 180 degree now we already know the values of these two this is equal to 70 degree plus 70 degree plus angle 4 is equal to 180 degree and therefore angle 4 will be 180 if you add this and transpose on the other side it will be 40 degree so let us note things down we have angle 4 is equal to 40 degree very good so we are good with angle 4 let me also write down the values of these angles as I find out so this comes to 40 degree now you'll see that angle 3 and angle 4 form a linear pair also angle 3 plus angle 4 is equal to 180 degree linear pair therefore angle 3 is equal to 180 minus 4 which we just found 40 and that is equal to 140 degree so angle 3 angle 3 is equal to 140 degree now you'll also see that 3 and 2 form a linear pair also angle 3 plus angle 2 is once again 180 degree linear pair that gets us we just found angle 3 so angle 2 can now be found out 180 degree minus 140 degree and that is equal to 40 degree so angle 2 comes to 40 degree that's it that's all for question number 29 in question number 30 it's given that these two lines are parallel that's what I have marked here the arrows indicate that this is parallel to this it's given that this angle is 125 degree so at the vertex A don't we see that x plus 125 form a linear pair x plus 125 degree is equal to 180 degree because they form a linear pair and therefore angle x equal to 180 minus 125 is 55 degree this comes to 55 degree also also angle X talking about this angle plus angle D 
is equal to 180 degree. They are co-interior angles, mind you. They are co-interior angles. They are co-interior angles. What are co-interior angles? The angles on the same side of a transversal. So in this case, this these two lines are parallel, and this being the transversal. So these are the two internal angles on the same side of a transversal, which add to 180 degrees. We, we have already found the value of, sorry, this is Z. We have already found this as 55. And therefore, angle Z equal to 180 minus 55, and that comes to 125 degree. So Z is 125. So I found one which was 55, the other is 125 degree. Let's now find the value of Y. Now by angle by angle sum property by ASP in quadrilateral A, B, C, D we will be able to determine the value of the remaining angle which is angle Y. So in this case, x and x, they make 2x, 2x plus y plus z is equal to 360 degree, mind you. The angle sum property in a quadrilateral is every internal angle adds to 360 degree. Now x, we found 55. So 2x becomes 110. y, we, we don't know yet or we have, no, yeah, we don't know yet. And the Z we found out to be 125 degree. That adds to 360 degree. Therefore, angle Y can now be determined. 360 minus 235 degree. And that gets to 5, 125 degree will be angle Y. So these are the three values. X, 55, Y, 125, and Z, 125. These are the three values. All right, so question number 31. Here it's given that the angles of a triangle are arranged in ascending order of magnitude. If the difference between two consecutive angles is 10 degree, find the three angles. So it's about the choice of the variable and the other angles. So in this case, it's given that they are arranged in ascending order, which means it must start from the smallest and then gradually increase. So that's the reason why we have picked the first one as X. And because there's a difference of 10 in every consecutive angle, the next one is 10 more, which means this is x plus 10 and this is x plus 20. Now, by angle sum property, we know of triangles, we know that x plus x plus 10 plus x plus 20 is equal to 180 degree. All we need to do is now to solve for x. So that gets us x plus x plus 10 plus x plus 20 is 180 degree. That gets us 3x plus 30 is equal to 180 degree. 3x will be 180 degree minus 30 degree and that gets us 150. And therefore x is equal to 150 degree by 3 and that is equal to 50 degree. So the measure, the measures of the angle would be x is 50, x plus 10 as you can see is 60 and x plus 20 is 70 degree. As a check, you can see that the 3 will add to 180 degree. That was question number 31. Now coming to question number 32. Here this figure is given, this information is given. And one measure, the measure of one angle is 60 degree. This is given. As you can see, this angle is C and Q, that's 60 degree. And we are now required to find all the other angles. So what we have done here is we have just marked them, given a name to each one, and, and we have just put one line, let the angles be as marked. So now, using all the different properties of interior and exterior and parallel lines and transversals and everything that we know, we are going to find the measures of all the remaining angles. So as you can see here, 
angle 1 plus 60 degree is equal to 180 degree. Make sure to give the reason, linear pair. That gets us what? Angle 1 is equal to 180 degree minus 60 degree and that is 120 degree. So we are done with angle 1. Angle 1 plus angle 2 also angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degree. Once again these two angles form a linear pair and because 1 is 120 degree angle 2 will come to 60 degree. You will see that angle 1 and angle 3 are equal because they are vertically opposite angles and therefore angle 3 is same as angle 1 which is 1, 2, 0. You will see that angle 7 and angle 2 form co-interior angles. Angle 2 plus angle 7 is 180 degree. Because they, because the co-interior angles are supplementary. And because we've already found 2 as 60, therefore, angle 7 will come to 180 minus 60, that is 120 degree. Now, angle 7 is equal to angle 5 vertically opposite angles. Therefore, angle 5 is equal to 120 degree. Angle 5 and angle 6 form linear pair. Therefore, angle 6, 180 minus 120 is equal to 60 degree. Now, you can use the same methodology to find every other angle. Now that we have found angle 6, you see that angle 4 will be equal to angle 6 because they are vertically opposite angles. So this way, we will be able to find all angles. That was question number 32. So in question number 32, it's given that AB is parallel to CD and we have one angle over here, 60 degree given and we are required to find the other angles. So we have just marked these angles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just write one statement to introduce these angles. Let the angles be as marked. And now, using the properties of parallel lines cut by a transverse or the various pairs of angles that get formed, we know alternate interior angles, corresponding angles. We also have vertically opposite angles, then co-interior angles. So using one or the other, we will be able to find the measure of every angle in this. So to start with angle 2 as you can see angle 2 is equal to 60 degree that's because they are vertically opposite angles. Give a reason for everything you write. Now angle 60 plus angle 1 also 60 degree plus angle 1 is equal to 180 degree and that's because they form a linear pair. So that gets us angle 1 and that is equal to 180 degree minus 160 degree and that is equal to 120 degree. So we're done with angle 1, we're done with angle 2. And you would see that angle 1 and angle 3 are vertically opposite angles. Also, angle 1 is equal to angle 3 that's because they are vertically opposite angles and therefore angle 3 is equal to 120 degree. Now see angle 5 and angle 3 are equal. Angle 5 is equal to angle 3 and angle 6 is equal to angle 2. They form corresponding angles. Corresponding angles and now we already have angle 3 that's equal to 120, therefore angle 5 comes to 120 degree. We already know angle 2 and therefore angle 6 is equal to, angle 2 is 60 and 6 is equal to 2, so angle 6 is also equal to 120 degree. <coughs> In a similar way, angle 4 and angle 6, 
angle 4 is equal to angle 6 and angle 7 is equal to angle 1. Again, they are corresponding angle pair, corresponding angles. And that way, we have angle, angle, sorry, this is not 6, angle 4 is equal to 60 degree, 60 degree. So, angle 4 comes as 60 degree and angle 7 and angle 1 are equal and we already found 1. So, angle 7 is also one equal to 180 degrees. So, that way we have found all the angles. Let's see. This is angle 1. We found angle 2, which is equal to 60 degree. Where is angle 2? This is angle 2. Then we found angle 3. Then we found angle 4. Here is 5. Here is 6. And here is 7. That way we have found the measure of all the angles in this figure. Question number 33, we are required to find the values of x, y and z in these two figures. So let's start with this. In this case, this information is not given, but when the information is not explicitly given, we have to assume to break the deadlock. And the deadlock that I'm talking about is, this has to be parallel to this so that we can find the values. It ought, it must have been given in the question, but if it is not given, we can write one statement that assume BE is parallel to BC. This is an assumption we have to make to be able to solve this question. Now, in triangle A, ABC by ASP, you see that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degree, angle A is Z, angle B is 40 degree and angle C is 30 degree and that is 180 degree. Therefore, Z is equal to 180 minus 70 and that comes to 110 degree. So we have found angle Z which is 110 degree. Now, angle X, angle X is equal to 40 degree and angle Y is equal to 30 degree because they are corresponding angles. This is something that you must write. How are these two angles equal? Because they are corresponding angles. You can see that D is parallel to BC and in this case DB is a transversal. In the latter case EC is a transversal and that's how we have angle X angle Y and angle Z known. So coming to this figure, in this case, as you can see, this is a right triangle. So take the two triangles. In this case, when you start with this triangle, in triangle ACB, you see that angle ACB is equal to 90 degree. As you can see, this is perpendicular. So if this is 90, this will also be 90 degree. Now, by ASP, 40 degree plus x plus 90 is equal to 180 degree. Therefore, x will be equal to 180 minus 130. If you transpose to this side, it gets us 50 degrees. So, we have found x. Now, let's take triangle ACD. Also, in triangle ACD by ASP again, 45 plus 90 plus y is equal to 180 degree and therefore angle y will come to 180 minus 135 degree. So this is 545 degree is the answer. So x50, y45.